Hello and welcome to Andy's Amateur Adventures. Today I'll be uh, repairing my laptop here. It has a bad battery that only holds a charge for about three seconds before it dies. And as you might be able to see with some bowing at the back of it, the laptop battery is starting to get a little bit inflated. I've owned this laptop for about four years, so a bad laptop battery at this point in time a little bit to be expected however I definitely do want to change this out so I don't have any risk of fires uh, this is an Asus laptop that I've just been carrying carrying around with me and doing my stuff and I'll be re repairing it in real time so you can see what it's like from an amateur perspective I'm not extremely good at this I'm definitely not a professional so if you want a professional's take, there are many, many tutorials online you can go take a look at. If you want to get a feeling for what it's going to be like for you when you do this, then you can go ahead and watch me because I'm as much a, of an amateur at this as, a, as anybody else. This is also my first time using my overhead cam, so I'm kind of experimenting around with it. But as you can see, the first step here is to remove all the uh, screws along the center part of it uh, on the bottom and then I just trace it with a little piece of plastic right there and the cover comes off and you can see that there are two fans in there one's for the CPU and one's for the GPU and it blows out from the heat sinks and if you are uh, taking this apart this is a good time to go in and clean out your fans because as you see there's a lot of dust in there and actually after this video was completed I went in and cleaned out my fans as well but once I took that cover off I, it was four or five screws there are several screws at the bottom here for those of you who are curious when I took the bottom cover off I used a size 0 Phillips head and while I'm taking all these other screws off, they're a lot smaller. I'm using a size double zero Phillips head. And I am using an iFixit kit. It is the, the base or basic iFixit kit. I don't own any of the specialty iFixit kits. I don't really get into extremely detailed type of repairs. So this is plenty for me. And a lot of the tools in it will actually go, go for repair projects that are probably above my head. Uh, one good thing with this laptop is that there's only two sizes of screws when I was disassembling it to get to the battery. The screws that was for that, that external cover and all these internal screws are all the exact same size. So you see in my uh, little lid for my iFixit kit, it has a little uh, screw separator. I only needed to use two different compartments from that little screw separator and it really didn't matter where I put them. And also the fact that the iFixit kit is lightly magnetized really did help with this project. And I don't actually have much else to say, uh, but I'm going to keep it going real time so you guys at home have a feeling for exactly what it takes to change out this battery. So you will notice I do make some mistakes later on in the video and I'll point out those mistakes once I get to it. But until we get there, I'm just going to let the video play and stop uh, narrating.
Okay, a little over five and a half minutes in, and I am finally done taking out screws. Now, at this point, it you should be able to flip it over, and the sides themselves will just pop apart. Uh, this is my first time opening up my laptop, as you can probably tell by the dust that you see inside the fans. And it took me a little while to figure it out. But just flip it on over, open it up, and it took me a little bit to pop it. Now you can see that my keyboard is a little bit uh, bowing, and that is because my battery in there is turned into a bit of an angry pillow. But there you go. I took that off and just flip it up. Now this is where I start making my mistakes. And my mistakes here are not knowing how to take out these uh, three uh, ribbon pieces right here. Also, you'll see that I strip out some of the screws that are holding in the, uh, in the thing. Now the first one I took out came out pretty easy. Uh, literally, you just pick it up and it comes towards you. The second one, it, the ribbon is clipped in. Uh, you need to pick up and away from you. With that, the one I'm having difficulty now, it actually just picks up, but it comes towards me instead of going towards away, or going away from me. So it is the complete opposite of the other one. And you'll see here that I realize I have enough space that I don't need to take it off, and I can get to the battery without taking it out. Now these screws in here are all Torx bits. So I believe they were uh, T7 Torx. And just go in there, and unfortunately one of them was stripped from the factory, because this is the battery from the factory. And uh, you'll eventually see how I deal with that, which uh, probably not the best way, uh, probably not any way that you that any professional would recommend, but I got the job done. And there goes the, the first torque bit coming out. And you can see it is extremely tiny. And I will say that the one ribbon cable I left in place, I did end up loosening and my keyboard did not work when I turned the laptop back on. Uh, it, it registered some strokes, but not all, but not the rest. So unfortunately, I had to go, I had to take everything apart after this off camera and fix the keyboard. But as soon as I figured out how to undo that ribbon cable and put it back, it worked out just fine. And this uh, Torx, Torx bit right here is one that was stripped out. And you see me continuously trying to get after it. And it just doesn't work and I'm just spinning. And this other one here is really tightened down as well. I do eventually get, get this other one. And I'm hopping back and forth between different size Torx bits because neither of them are working. But I do eventually get this one. And there it goes, it finally loosened. And that's two of three out. And you'll see me just continuously trying to work at this one. Uh, and now it's completely stripped out and it's just spinning freely. And since the battery is loose at this point, I tried wiggling the battery, hope, hoping that that would do something, but it doesn't. Now I was able to detach the battery from the motherboard at this point which actually, uh, I thought that it might have clipped in. It's just uh, held there by friction. There's no clip. You just pull it straight out towards yourself or up away from the desk, however you want to phrase that. Now we are passing the 10 minute mark, which is about how long it would probably take a professional to do this job. Uh, it m maybe even a little bit less. But you know that the same saying goes for computers as it does for automotive repair. You're one strip screw or rounded bolt away from a half an hour long job taking you three, four hours or, or an entire day. Which is where I am right here. 
and stuck on just this one for a little while and I'm thinking maybe if I can loosen the battery, wiggle the battery around, that'll help loosen the, this Torx bit. I don't mean to get my bald head in, in the middle of that, of the camera. And this right here is where I do something that uh, no professional repair technician would ever recommend. And I just go ahead and break the damn thing off. Yep, I'm trying to move the battery, hopefully that, hoping that if I can rotate the battery a little bit, it'll loosen the Torx bit and I can get it to go and nothing cracks the Torx bit. And I'm actually putting on a larger Torx, Torx piece and nada, just free spinning. At this point in time, I pretty much have decided, okay, I'll just break that little piece off. But I want to go and get my replacement battery to make sure that everything is kosher before I go ahead and do that. Just to make sure that I'm not going to be out of using my laptop for, for a little bit. And this is the replacement battery. It does take a little bit to get it out of the box. And as you can see it looks very similar. Only it's not inflated. At this point, I was thinking maybe I would just put the replacement battery in only with uh, two Torx bits securing it and just leave that third one off. I did eventually decide to get that third one off and I had inspiration right now to go get a different tool to try to work, work on that. And now I'm back with, with a tiny little pair of pliers. And it worked. Enough grip on it and I was able to get it out. And hey, there it goes. Now I'm getting rid of the old battery and doing side-by-side -side comparison. And that's where the model number for the battery is. I was holding it up to the camera, hoping, hoping that you could see it. You can't really make it out, but you can make it out a little bit better in this one. And that's what a four-year-old laptop battery should not look like. And if yours looks like that, uh, get rid of it and do a proper turn-in. I do currently live in Hawaii, and in Hawaii we can't put it in the trash or put it in the recycling. We have to take it into a special center or to Best Buy. Uh, Best Buy actually takes in these batteries. I went ahead and reconnected that piece and it literally just pushes on. I don't know why I had such difficulty with it, but just push it on and there it goes. Now that the battery is connected, technically you could uh, reconnect those ribbon wires to the keyboard and turn it on at this point. I wouldn't recommend it uh, if you're not grounded because you could fry something on the motherboard and I would definitely secure the battery first. But you could, in theory, check your, your laptop at this point. I did not, I waited till I assembled everything. Which, as I said earlier, I ended up having to disassemble everything because of that one ribbon that's still attached actually was a little bit loose. So only half of my keyboard worked. But from here on out, it is just me putting screws back in. So I'll let some music play as I do that, and I'll come back to voiceover whenever I need to.
Now this first cable that I'm putting back in, it just slides in and there isn't actually really anything that, that holds it in. You just push it in. Uh, there is that little latch that flips it down, but from what I can tell, flipping that latch doesn't do much as far as holding the cable. It's mostly held in there by friction. And then this second set of, of cables, you push it in and when you flip this down, uh, if you just push it down the way I did, it didn't go all the way down, so I had to push it down further with tweezers. And when you push it down further, that's what actually holds the ribbon in. And the third one, uh, again, I that second one, I had to push it up away from me and pull it down towards me as far as opening and closing it. And the latch on the other ribbon cable is reverse of that. And none of the uh, instruction manuals I saw from the professionals uh, showed that in any depth, which is why I'm going over it. And from here on out, I'm pretty much just uh, putting screws in. So when, when I put the keyboard back, uh, back where it went and closed the laptop, the side panels actually just literally snapped back into place nice and easy like they were trained to be there, which the plastic probably got used to being there after sitting there for four years. But from here on out, I'll let some music play as I tighten up a bunch of these screws.
right there was the final screw. So it is now the moment of truth. I flip it over and I gamble on turning it on. Uh, this battery is straight out of the box. I had no clue if it had any charge in it or not. It apparently had a very little bit of charge because once the screen eventually came up, it, uh, it went right to work and uh, had, and I saw the battery condition at the very bottom was at like 2%. So it does work. Later on, I did charge it up fully and it runs for hours at a time as if it's, it was a brand new battery. Imagine that. But it did take a little while for the windows to pop up. I'm not exactly sure why. So you see a black screen right here and finally, the moment of truth, it, it goes. Now the laptop uh, keyboard did not work because I had loosened that third ribbon. So once I, uh, once I uh, complete this video, I disassembled it, I cleaned out those fans, and I reattached that third ribbon a little bit better. Hopefully this gives you a little bit more of an understanding of what it takes to change out this battery for amateurs like us. I'm at about the 26 minute mark of a 10 minute job. Have a good day.